Well, welcome to Juneau, Alaska Centennial Hall. We've got the second of two bouts that are happening tonight here with the Juneau Roller Girls. This time, it's the Extra Roughs going up against the Sitka Slayers. I'm in decline, and with me, as always, Tyrant Rex is Tyrant Rex. She's no tyrant, but she wrecks things. I like to think I'm a tyrant <laughs> on the track. We'll see how that goes next season. And we just got to see a great <laughs> bout between the Juno All-Stars and the Orange Crush. Juno All-Stars came on top in that one. Now we've got a little bit different configuration of the Juno team. This is exciting. This is the extra rough. Some of the All-Stars are on this team, but there's other skaters there here is. as well. And they're coming out in just a minute here. But first, we're going to get the introductions of the Sitka Slayers. It's happening right now, and we're going to turn our attention to the track. All right. Number 13 is Becker the Wrecker. We already saw Bruce Pinner. And coming up next is 15... 7-3, and that is Slovak, Slovak yourself. <laughs> Slovak like yourself! The captain of this team is Crash Menagerie, 1944. D-Day happened during that year. I wonder if that has to do with it. Number 424, we have Jewel B. Hurton. Looks Jewel like she might be doing some jamming for us tonight. Then number 486 is Margaret Banger. Angel of Death is next. Another Number 666. Six, 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 six. six. And we got an uh, interview with her at halftime. We'll be talking to Angel of Death. Wonderful. 727 is Obscene. Yes, the <laughs> AU symbol for gold. Capital AUB. And Obscene, yes. Here's a Valkyrie next. Number eight. And number, number 903, eight. Double Decker, co captain of the Sika Sound Slayers. Coming up next is Catastrophe 9091. There she is. And Hot Wheels Hutton coming in next. H2OH. And then N202, Nitrogen Peroxide. <laughs> she was one of she was here from the beginning of this sick of thing. Like I a like handful that of name. these girls have been doing it for a couple years now. It's so cool to see them here in Juno. And Kippard Smacks, there she's a Mackin. Kippard Smacks, she's number 44. The bench ghost is Coach Salt and Coach Kuppa. And then there's a couple of roster alternates on hand as well. Sodium Chloride, who we also got to talk to at halftime. And also Gelatine. <laughs> so there's the roster for the Sitka Slayers. And as you were saying earlier to me, this is the first time they've had a bout. Yeah. I mean, outside they've, they've, of outside they've had of Sitka. two bouts uh, within Sitka, yeah. Right. With themselves, like matchup bouts. This is the first time that they've been in Centennial Hall playing another team. Under the from bright South lights, Alaska. the fame, it the fortune. It happens to be the Juno Roller Girls. The big city. Here it is, Juno, Alaska. <laughs> yeah, the big city. The big city. <laughs> this is it. It's like when the Hoosier, like in Hoosiers, when they walk into that big. <laughs> Gym, you know. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what it's all about here. Now here comes the Juno, the Juno roller, girls. roller Girls. These are the extra roughs. You may notice a few familiar faces here if you were with us in the first part in the uh -oh. first game. They are fast machines. They keep it low and clean. They do. And they are coming on to some ACDC right now. For now, until we get some new recruits coming in, this is the extra roughs. So that is C4, Kylie Wyote. Who is from Sitka, so she's going to be playing oh, against her friends here. All right, a little extra drama there. Kylie Wyote coming up next there. Hawk Block, number 46. Now we've got Hypnagoria. And Gory just skated a couple of, uh, not even a half hour ago <laughs> in a incredible. grueling match. Yeah, here comes Just Julie. Just Julie, number 11, that, that some of these girls are going to in a row. Good on him. It's going to yeah. take a lot of energy. And here's another who just Rolling was on the court. Marble. She was doing some damage a little while ago. We'll see how she does in this next bout, as well as Scary Unitely, who's out there next. That's Scary Unitely. Here comes Fatty Duke coming around next. Fatty Duke was a jammer and a blocker in the last She did great. She might do a little more blocking here. 
Um, I think that, that because there are a few all-stars on the team, this is going to be a great opportunity for the extra roughs to step up to the plate and try their hand at, try, at blocking and all these awesome things. Here it's, comes Skady Bryce. Yeah, that was Skady Bryce, speaking of all-stars. And here comes uh, your next uh, one here. That is, of course, Titan Young, blocking specialist. And here comes Hellion Hansen, who blocks. She, she jams. Great in the last. She yeah, does she it did. all. And uh, they're shaking this place all night long. And here comes T. Tea. And uh, speaking of shaking all night long, T was shaking people's rib cages all <laughs> night long in the last bout. We'll see if she still has that energy to put on those shoulder blocks. Yeah, I would avoid her that. shoulders at all times. I would avoid her at all times, that's right. <laughs> and there is Kim. There is, I'm sorry, Kim yeah, Bustable, Kim Bustable. Who got MVP Jammer for the last bout. B4U was an all-star for sure, an all-star among all-stars during the last bout that we just great. watched. Well, there they are. Those are your Juno Roller Girls. The configuration that they're calling the Extra Roughs. And they're the team that they're going to take on the Sitka Slayers for Sitka's first bout outside of the friendly confines of their own hometown. This They're in really enemy exciting. territory now. Although I have to say there have been several boot camps in Sitka that Juno people have gone to. I know Hot Damn have, Julie, have hosted camps there. Wyote's gone over there a lot. Skatey's gone over there. There's a good camaraderie between these girls because Juno started first. We we all kind of learned together, and we were able to like pass wisdom around and that kind of thing. So these, there's there's good friendship vibes here. There's good. This is, I feel fun. Yes. I like feel it's, it in the it air. It feels like a, in soccer they <laughs> could, we might call it a friendly. Yeah. Right. They would call like they call that. them a friendly match. They don't necessarily. They're not. They're not about the standings that are going to be happening in your own league. No, they're but about, they're about they're good together. friendly competition. Good stuff and going on, a few years and that's of work, what's going on here. They're finally here. That's right. So and, cool. And I think a lot of them, as you say, a lot of them, they've they've been to Juno. Juno players Juno's have been, been down to Sick there. Head. They've nurtured that team coming along, and here it is, come so to this fruition. Is, there's a lot of love in here. Yeah. They want us. They want us. Juno wants to see Sitka play really well. It's it's the extra rust, which is going to be like right. the standing B team for even next season. Likely, we're going we're going to need some new recruits so that we can elbow the all stars out of there. They can go to their team. So also to be said, summer skating. It's the off season for Juno Roller Girls. They'll still be holding practices three days a week. And it's a great opportunity to learn to skate in a really laid back environment, so that maybe you could be on the extra toughs next season. Yeah. So if you're in Juno or whatever town you're in, seek out the roller derby club in your town because it's happening they're waiting to if take you, don't you on board if you have one just make and one and make one that's just like the Juno roller did. girls that's did that's what Juno did <laughs> it seems to be the best best method of roller now, derby we have one little special message that we wanted to do for one of our for one of our officials out there her name is the Tundra Wookie. Oh yeah, we and might she see wanted her to say bit. hello to her mom and dad that are watching right now live in Idaho so Tundra Wookie says hi to mom and dad out there in Idaho as we start our first jam of the night here between the Sitka Sound Slayers and the Juno Roller Girls. I'm excited. You're this excited. This is history. I'm so excited. Let's get it on. It's happening right now. Here it goes. Oh, and Yo! it's on right now. And here we go with T taking up jammer duties like for Juno and Jewel heading out Jewel. first and Jewel foremost for uh, Sitka Slayers. And so Jewel B. Hurton, and she's looking to lay a hurt on Juno. Now listen, here's one thing to just think, keep in mind. Experience aside, there's a lot of those Juno skaters out there with some tired legs right now. Yeah. So this is something that is maybe some fertile territory for Sitka right now. They are in the lead with a two to zero run right now, first off and foremost at this first jam it's good, that though. they've it's had. Good. And if that's a great thing they can always say, first jam we ever had against another team <laughs> in another town in the big city of Juno, we were up 2-0. We'll see what happens. They may win this bout and that's when a good all point is said too. and done. Yes, there are all stars on the Juno team, but they are exhausted. They just had that bout against Orange Crush. So it kind of, it does sort of balance the scales a little bit. And here you go. Now here is uh, coming around. Sitka has one lead jammer again. 
And that is uh, Slovak yourself. <laughs> and coming up around though right now is uh, is uh, uh, Marvel coming up right now, Roland Marvel. And Roland Marvel is coming around right it's now. He's not lead jammer. He's not lead jammer. And so, so walk yourself calls it off before Marvel can get to the pack. So some good right quick when she gets to the strategy pack. decisions happening already on Sitka's part two. Quick jams happening, uh, calling them quick, getting a couple of quick points and calling them. And that was another example right there. They got three points in that. They're up five to zero. They're not letting Juno score. Looks like that might be their strategy right now. Just don't let Juno get any points on the Just board. Don't let them get points. And we're and good. We'll be fine, yeah. <laughs> if we win five to zero, we can live with that. All right, here it comes. Coming up next, we got Gory going up against one of the Sitka Slayers, and we'll tell you who that is right now. It's our first time being able to look at this team as well. And here she comes. Yeah, that's Catastrophe. Number and nine, Catastrophe nine, is coming around. She's number She's 991, watcher. The blocker double decker has been uh, sent into the penalty box there, the Aurora Project Sinbin. Hypnagori fighting against this back wall. But here. Catastrophe is through and is on her scoring run already. And here Gory's she comes. headed to the penalty box. So they have a power jam situation already in place with Catastrophe coming through, trying to get through that wall of Juno's and knocked out. Well done there by Juno's blockers. And she calls it. And she calls it. I think she got a few points there. She got four points. Now it's Sitka 9 0 against Juno. I think Juno's a little shocked. <laughs> I think they're knocked back on their heels a little bit here. Here's this experienced team, and Sitka's come in and said, We don't care about experience, we care about heart, <laughs> desire, fast, the passion pace. For derby. And we're doing it. And they're up 12 0 right now, and they're coming around for their next jam. It's exciting to watch it. Catastrophe still skating. She doesn't care. She's like, I'm going to keep skating. <laughs> do this all day. Here we go. I can do, yeah. What? This doesn't, doesn't bother me. She's coming through on a power jam situation right now. She's forced out to the inside. And Catastrophe going all the way back around now. Catastrophe is T is saying, it, come she's on. she's not lead jammer. I don't know if Catastrophe was watching that first bout, but if she was, she'd know T is not to be trifled with. Coming back around now. And I just want to mention, yes. like for anyone who's joining their first bout or even their second or third bout, there's still an element of like, like kind of getting the rules to a really comfortable place in your head. So this game is going to be a little less structured than the All-Star game. You might see a little more things like questionable things happening and, you're, and you kind of like have to like kind of empathize with these players here and understand like this is this is a monumentous event. Like, this is their first bout yeah. outside of town. And a lot of rules here, a lot of strategy involved. You can imagine just going out for your first time and playing second base in baseball. Yeah. And, and the ball comes to you. You don't know what base to throw it to, <laughs> depending on what situation is happening. And that's what's going on. So you might see where they're calling jams yep. at different times or, you know, they were in a right, the, the best position or something like that. Those kinds of things will happen. I agree with you. And for anyone who's that. just tuning in, I did mention earlier also that the rules have changed since January. So since Sika started playing, they're also kind of dealing with that curveball. And here comes Hellion Hansen in the lead, in the lead jammer position. And meanwhile, number forty-four, Kippert Smacks Kippert is trying Smacks to get through. And fighting Kippert's against that Wyote Titan wall. Kippert Smacks has a Sierra, nice defense. Kippert Smacks reminds me a little bit of our own April Mayhem. <laughs> there you right? go. Right? She's got that little bit of a style. Missed like April lady. Mayhem. She's got that body type long and lean. And she's looking to score some uh, damaging points here, but Hellion Hansen. Oh, and Hellion Hansen gets taken out with a hard hit. Wow. That was a wallop laid on her by number eight, Valkyrie who uh, it was like a Wagner opera. <laughs> it was like Valkyrie happening there. Oh my goodness, Valkyrie laid her out. And uh, that was, here we'll see a replay of that hit coming around. It's just at the end of this, you can see eight setting up here, Valkyrie setting up. She calls and there is the impact. Oh, and her wow, head snaps man. back. And she catches a knee. I'll tell you, that's actually a little bit concerning there. They're looking at her on the bench. And uh, she looks like she's fine, but that was a hard hit. That's what happens. And right after early. she called it off, yep, too. Yep. I don't think there was any foul play in there. Uh, uh, Valkyrie was setting up to take the hit that Hellion Hansen was going to lay on her. She just took. She just uh, gave her a good hit. There. Now T calls off the jam. Points for Hellion Hansen. 
Sitka in Gino. the lead right now. 14 to 10 is the score with Sitka in the lead. And uh, Juno doing a little catch up here, getting a couple of uh, points in the last couple of jams. And uh, Hellion Hansen was a big part of that in that last jam, even though she went down hard at the very end of it. She's skating around on the bench there. She's fine. And uh, right now there's two Sitka Slayers in the sin bin. So this starts off as a power jam situation for Juno. And Fatty Dukes fights on the inside, but gets knocked off just on the inside. If the Juno wall can hold, they, could, they might allow Fatty Dukes to catch up. They've done exactly that. Here comes Fatty Duke coming up on the inside, then to the outside, but she falls. Meanwhile, so Sitka is coming well, around. Lock yourself. And Ghost of you Lock Yourself has come through, and she's lead jammer. She's lead jammer, go Slovak yourself. And she's coming in, wide stance through, and pushed out hard. Oh, and another By player went down marble. on her leg. I think she and felt that a little bit. And Roland got called on that one. It might have been a low block. And yeah, Roland Marvel got called on that. She fell on her leg a little bit. She seems to be fine. Coming back up now, Fatty go Slovak yourself. Fight Fighting your through the pack. the pack, here she comes. She's chasing after Go Slovakia. She's going to chase after Patty, Fatty Duke. Sorry. It's going to be a race. And looking at the bench and saying, what should I do? Yeah, She's past Fatty really? Duke on the inside. Fatty Duke trying to come around. We'll see what happens here. Oh, a good hit. And she calls it immediately. <laughs> Nicely done wow. by the Juno. Well, yeah, you're speechless. <laughs> it's just so cool to see. I've, I've never seen Sitka play together. T -Rex, the all all awesome. T-Rex could do was just nod her head and wanna, say, wow. I'm just wow. watching the game. Oh, yeah, we're still announcing. That was a fun <laughs> hit to see. We'll see. Uh, that was uh, exciting to see that hit at the end. Just when you yeah. see a when you see a skater just go completely off their feet like that, you know they've uh, message received is what <laughs> you might you say. <laughs> message received. All right. Coming up next, here's Helen Hansen. Oh, oh that, no, no, I think I'm that's sorry, Hansen. Right, yeah. Italian. Coming in after that hard hit, but showing no effects of it, and she's through awesome quickly. Awesome job. Well done. Meanwhile, for Sitka, it's catastrophe coming back around. Skating well, she pumps her elbows out as she skates. Catastrophe does. And Hellion is coming through, pushed on the outside, and she calls it, and she calls it before uh, Catastrophe can get uh, any scoring opportunity there. As Jimmy, we listen, next as we we listen have, here, it's a rat yeah. round and round <laughs> here on the PA system. Love to hear some 80s cheese rock. I love it. It works, it works well for Derby. It works well. Oh, yeah. They're going round and round, aren't they? Yeah. On the track, yeah. <laughs> we got a Hymnagoria, jamming for Juno. I can't see who's on the other side. I may or may not have seen Rat live. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. I'm an older person than you. <laughs> okay, coming up now. There they go Corey with Corey coming out fast, through. but crashed oh. from the Slayers. And Becca the Wrecker. And Becca the Wrecker holding, holding her, her back. back. So that was great blocking by the Slayers. You They're, just can't say anything more than that was just great blocking. <laughs> and Kipper Gory. Smacks makes it through, and she's almost back to the pack here. Gory that was exciting. Gory the had, the, had the advantage. She was cutting to the outside. Yeah, I thought she was out of it for a minute. And uh, Sitka Slayers crash especially. Caught nice up with hit her by and Wyote, just pushed number her back. C4. And that is a Wiley Coyote. Kipper's she just shot Kipper Snacks out on both sides, and now she's driving her back. Kipper Snacks has to has to enter in behind Coyote. <laughs> Coming back around this way, the action has kind of slowed down a little here as the jammers are catching up. Titan Young is the jammer for Juno. Coming through, Titan Young we saw mainly as a blocker in the All Stars match, and now we're looking cool to see as her jamming. Yeah, as she's doing and her she's jamming. Through. And she's through. She just pushed her way on through there. Lead jammer. And she is trucking around the track. Here she comes. Titan Young, number 25 there for Juno in red. And coming around to the back. She gets past. I don't even know if they saw her there. She was know quick. Either. She got three calls it off. I think she got three points. She's holding up three fingers and saying, I got three points. And they're going to credit Juno there on that last jam with five points, Sitka with three. <laughs> Right now, the score is 16 to 24 with Sitka in the lead. And I'll tell you something, you. would you have predicted that? Sitka in the lead coming out. I don't out. know if that's what I would have predicted They're right brash, the they're young, <laughs> they're a new team. They don't care about They've history. They've got the fire. They don't said. care they're about history. Banners in the ceiling, <laughs> they don't care. 
They just want to come out and cause a ruckus, and that's what they're doing. They're slaying right now. We got Double Decker, Decker is out. Number 902 up against Helly and Hansen for the Juno Roller Girls. Ooh, and she calls it. She calls it, it immediately. Double She's always looking over her shoulder to make sure that she Double Decker employing some good strategy there. Looking over to the bench. Yeah, very cool. The house announcers are asking to give Sitka a round of applause, and I that's good it. to hear. I'm clapping. Yes, absolutely. It's 16 to 26 right now. And uh, we'll see how friendly this home crowd is <laughs> if it gets down to this kind of a score towards the end. We'll see how friendly they remain. All know, right. One thing I really like about Southeast Alaska is I feel like no matter where you go in this panhandle, you find friends and you find people that you can relate to. They've seen that as you're in your filmmaking oh, work. Yeah. You've seen that as well. And, and so it's cool. I think that I think that uh, while we love June and we always want him to win, there's a lot of support here for Sitka as and well. And speaking of your filmmaking, you're doing a documentary, finishing up a documentary right now on roller derby in Juneau. Yeah. That's exciting. The premiere is coming out. This fall. This fall. It'll be fun to see. So that's going to be exciting Sitka as well. Sitka will be in it. And Sitka's going to, the formation of the Sitka Slayers will be in the documentary about yeah. roller derby. So we'll be looking forward to that as well. On that Juno scored four on that one, so they caught up a little bit. 20 and just to 26. Julie jamming. I love seeing that sometimes. That's neat to see. Very exciting. Just Julie has so much talent. In the all-star position, her her greatest talents might be in blocking. She's hard to get past but, as a blocker. But when you just put her on skates and say, go skate, she's fast, <laughs> she's furious, she's maneuverable, and she's uh, she knows what she's skater. doing. Yeah. We got Gory She's exciting here to watch all the, the time. Yeah. Here we go with Gory trying to come through. And oh, and just at the last moment there, Valkyrie looked like she might have had an advantage on her, but she just got her feet knocked out from under her. Meanwhile, Sitka Slayers have caught up Jammer to Gory and, Jammer, and are right? passing her. And We've that is Jewel, Jewel Be Sorry. Gory, and Gory calls it off as Jewel enters the pack. I said Jewel Be Sorry. It's actually Jewel Be Hurting. <laughs> oh, oh. Jill be sorry and you'll be sorry that you're hurt. here's a here's a replay on that fall from there Valkyrie went down but then Jewel did not give up one bit and passes and on eight. the next turn on the inside here she comes around to pass that's the end of that re and we'll replay and we'll go next to live action as the jammers are staggered back out what's happening in this formation here well, uh, as long as they're between the pivot line and the jam line, this is okay. And it's an interesting tactic. I'm not sure exactly what the team is going for, but here we have, oh. Oh, they're coming all the way back it. around. They're, they're, kind of they're, eat they're the doing baby the maneuver. Here. They're moving the maneuver. We've we call seen this, this in one other bout before. We call this the double Cincinnati. <laughs> Actually, I just made that up, but still coming all the way back around. I'm sure there's a real name for it. I don't know it. But she pulls, let's just call it the double Cincinnati for now. Well, I'll Google what the real I'm, name is. I'm pretty sure it's not. Uh, You're pretty you're, sure it's not that? That's a poker game, I think. I don't know. It's a bit of a unicorn play. And <laughs> it's she was a trying unicorn. To, she, was trying to, she was trying to get her to, the team to eat the baby. It's called Eat the Baby. Called Eat the Baby. No, it's not. <laughs> and yet it's. It is. It's called Eat push, the Baby. Yeah, and when they, if oh, they can push no. the other jam back into the pack, then the pack can swallow that jammer up, and that jammer has to fight through the pack before they can even make it halfway oh, to their initial pack. that's fascinating. I'd much rather call it Double Cincinnati. Okay. We can, can we just call it Double for, Cincinnati? Just for today, we can I call it Double like Cincinnati. I don't like Eat the Baby. I, that's a horrible <laughs> name for that. All right, coming up now. Here we go. We've Meanwhile, T is skating, and she's skating well. Probably reveling in her little uh, double and She's skating in a play. power jam right now because the Sitka Slayer player has been put in the sin bin. She scored 16 points so far, so Juno has now jumped out into the lead, and this is exactly kind of what you thought might happen in one jam. It's Juno's so easy to make that, that experience would come through for Juno, and here it goes T. Someone like her, an experienced, powerful skater like Sitka T. We've got back, uh, Kipford smacks back from the box here, hitting the back and of the pack. There's T coming through, though. She's a little winded. She's been skating for about two hours now, <laughs> folks. So she's a little winded. She's got one hand on her hip. She's looking to pass through it. She just does it. It's like she's just scoring points at will. <laughs> there she goes. Ooh. And she calls it right there, as you could expect. Wow, here comes the here comes the double Kipper Cincinnati. Smacks a little bit exhausted. Let's look at the double. You call it eating the baby. I like double Cincinnati right. much better. But here it comes. She comes back around. Now listen, now here it goes. As planned, they come back around. Sitka doesn't know what to do, right? They're like, what's happening? It's a little bit of a mind. This it's is a mind game here. 
And then they come back the around. They're back, allowed to come back around. And then she pushes around. her all the way forward. The idea was to get that jammer locked into the pack back there. Okay, wow, a really fun strategic <laughs> move to see there. <laughs> it's, I love that's, it when people do that's that. That's Juno having a little bit of fun with Sitka there in yeah. a way. And uh, they jumped out to a big lead with that maneuver as well. 45 to 27 with Juno in the lead over Sitka now. Hellion is through as lead jammer. Hawk block has been sent to the sin bin mm -hmm. there. So Hawk block comes in as a, as a blocker there for uh, the extra roughs. And Hellion is and Hellion through again. Is through. Jump the skate on that one. Nice pass. We've got Catastrophe coming up behind her. Nitrogen is back from the box. Ooh. Oh, a hard, a hard knockdown there. Hellion Hansen has been uh, taking how some knocks. She is. She, yeah, she like just, falls down. She looks around. She's like, yep. She keeps eye in. contact with yeah, her. Yeah, she's her ref. always got her head in the game, no matter what's happening. Explain a little bit about the refs, the inside refs, the outside refs, the names of those, and what they're what you're looking for there. There's jammer refs. Yeah. So you've got a ref for each jammer, and you've got an inside ref, and you've got an outside ref, and you've got kind of this like, you have this sort of like that they that a ref would do kind of like half the track, and then there'd be a second ref on the other side to pick up, you know, so that they have visuals Here's at that all times. Here's that hit, Hellion Hansen going down at the end, but still tapping her hips and looking for her jammer rep and saying, hey, yo, back. tapping the hips here. All right, Skatey Bright goes down hard as uh, Becker, Becker the Wrecker. Wrecker comes around. She Jamming is, for uh, Sitka. looks like she's lead. Becker the Wrecker is interesting. And she's a Marvel is headed to the box. So it's a power jam for Becker the Wrecker of Sitka. Sounds she's got clear. the long legs. And she's got, you know, she only takes like three strides per side of the track, it seems like. <laughs> As she comes around, gains a lot of momentum, stays wide, and then goes thin. Interesting tactics there. Still hard fighting. As she tries so to stay in the girls. inside the track. She you does there. Only Hawk one skate went outside the track. Scarra and around she goes. Becker the Wrecker is racking up some points here. This is what Sitka needed after that hit on the strategic and sneaky move of the double Cincinnati. They can definitely get caught up right now if they keep pushing. Here it goes, Becker the Wrecker coming around as Juno has two players out in the sin bin. Hawkflock taking a bit of a beating, staying on her feet. And she's through again. I'll tell you what, this is exactly what they needed. She's got four more points. They're at 47-44 now as they are catching up. There's some real action happening among the blockers. Woo. And uh, now. Great defense from Slovak yourself getting rolling out there and still holding her back. Scary Knightley returns from the box. Rolling Marvel, oh, almost breaks free. Margaret Banger has been sent to the sin bin by, uh, in, on the Sitka side. She is now taking a breather in the sin bin. They've got it, yeah. She's got it. Okay, so 1573, so lock yourself a um, little too far there in front of the pack. If you go past 20 feet, they'll call it as a no pack. Uh, here comes Roland Marvel now, coming around as the jammer. She's not the lead jammer, but she's coming in off out of the sin bin. And the lead jammer calls it. Here comes the replay on that last action there. Since this is the second uh, bout of the night, here it comes. She's coming in low, switches around, uses that body weight, and then uses the fact that she's just a live panther <laughs> to get through that wall and does it well. Great to see that kind of skill coming out of Sitka, the Sitka cool. Slayers. Yeah, that was some great skating there. Looks like this might be the end of the half here with Sitka up by two points so far, 49 to 47. Wow. This is the second bout of the night, as we've mentioned, so they've shortened the halves. They're just 20-minute halves and a shorter halftime. Right now it's timeout on the floor here, timeout on the, on the track as the refs are discussing getting this last jam going. It looks like they'll get one more jam going here. They've got enough time on the track to get one more jam going. And uh, Juno's going to set up again in that kind of confused. No, they're not. They're back. They were going to set up in the double Cincinnati position. <laughs> but instead, they went back to. I don't know if you can get away with that it, more than once. I know. Someone's going to call me. I'm sure we're getting Someone's tweets about it right now. <laughs> I'm sure they're tweeting AK Derby right now. Hashtag AK Derby if you want to tweet about the double Cincinnati. And uh, put me in my place. <laughs> Please do it right now. 
You can go at 360 North, and you, I hope you're tuning in on 360north.org or tuning in on uh, 360 North here in Woo! Alaska. She escapes that. Uh, a whole bunch of people she just escapes fell it. She gets back in. She's okay getting back in, and she's lead jammer. declared lead jammer. So there she goes. Meanwhile, Gory was a blocker on that, and she's Gory. sent out going to the sin bin. The jammer for Sitka is in the sin bin, and she's looking to get off right now. She wants to come off of there. And here she comes. She's coming in. She's going to come in quick. And T has been called. This is Becker the Wrecker. Becker the Wrecker comes around and looks to catch T, and she does. So Sitka looks to gain some points here on the last jam of this half of the bout. Here comes Becker the Wrecker. We were just talking about her and saw uh, some replay of her earlier, and she gets through that picking up pack, those jam points. picking up some points. They're going to go in well ahead of Got Juno a at the five half. seconds left here. Here she goes, that low stance, wide. She doesn't tip off where, what direction she's going to go in. She comes through, and now she's getting into some heavy blocks, but comes back through around on the inside, and she calls it right there. That's going to be the last jam of the half with Becker the Wrecker doing more damage fun. with 10 points against zero to Juno. So with that last jam, with only six seconds la left on the clock, they called one more jam and Sitka goes up significantly by 59 to 48. They're up 11 points in a fairly low scoring affair so far. Again, this is 10 minutes shorter half. So uh, there's a little bit less scoring opportunity to happen. We've got a little bit of a conference happening here with the refs, but I think we can safely say that the half is going to be over here no matter what. It's 59 to 48, Sitka over Juno. What are you thinking so far, Rex? I want to hear your thoughts. Still pretty exciting to see Sitka rocking this hard on their first bout of Isn't it? I think it's incredibly <laughs> exciting, really right? It's really cool. It just, it's, it's, what's, what's really incredible is how quickly you can go from a person who has never put skates on or maybe didn't since haven't since they're like six years old to playing like this. But the other thing that I think it doesn't that take about much the sport time at all. is that you can what you can find is you can find your special skill oh, quickly. Yeah. Just That's Julie, what seems just to happen. Julie calls it your derby superpower. Your derby superpower. Everybody so has one. You put on skates, you don't know how to skate <laughs> well, you skate around, you get that under you. And then all of a sudden you realize, hey, this I'm a good blocker. I'm good at. Yeah. Or hey, I'm a good jammer. Or my or, hey, height or my size yeah. or my girth or whatever is a I huge can do, advantage. I right can now? use my toes well. I'm yeah. tall. I'm I'm short. I'm yeah. whatever it is. And all those things end up being the thing that becomes your derby superpower. And that's what we're seeing. And tonight you start with to see and you start and as we meet these players, like we see them out here on the track, it's kind of we're starting to see these superpowers come out. I did want to give a shout out really quick. Sitka would like everyone to know the Sitka Sound Slayers are available for bouting other people. So if there are other teams out there that want to bout Sitka, they want to bout you. Look them up on Facebook or their website online, Sitka Sound Slayers. They're, they're getting in the game now. And speaking of the Sitka Sound Slayers, we got a chance to talk to a few of them at halftime here. Yeah. We're going to go to an interview with your derby wife. She's the best. She's the best. She's so great with these two. Shorty Let's Morena. She's doing a couple of interviews with a couple of the Sitka Slayers. We're going to check that out right now and get back to second half action in just a couple of minutes. Okay, we're here now with two skaters from Sitka, from the team Sitka, Sitka Sound Slayers. We got Angela Death and Sodium Chlorine. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. We're pumped to be here. Great. Yeah, really excited. Okay, so um, the question, the million dollar question, how did you get your name? <laughs> well, my name is Angela, surprise, surprise. Um, and we're the Sick of Sound Slayers. My, my husband's favorite band is the Slayers, and they have a song called Angela Death, and he really felt passionate about me <laughs> embodying, you know, the, the Slayer rock and roll. So um, that's kind of where my name came from. And then my number is 666, because it doesn't really get any tougher than that, does it? <laughs> <laughs> great, that's a great name. So what about you? How did you get your name? Uh, well, uh, sodium chloride, but everybody calls me salt because my husband and I started a sea salt company about seven years ago in Sitka, Alaska Pure Sea Salt. So my whole life revolves around sodium chloride. So that's why, <laughs> and my, my number is uh, 417, that's, um, I'm actually married to the coach, Co Coacher Salt, and that's our anniversary. Super cheesy, but 
<laughs> I like him. That's great. That's great. So how does it work to have him as a coach? Do you hate him sometimes? Do you love him? Is he nice to you or does he push you hard? Um, all of the above. Yeah, it, it's great. Yeah, it just means that as any gir derby girl knows, your life revolves around derby. Well, ours really does because everything because he's, he's the coach. So it's good. You know, sometimes it's bad, but mostly good. Great, that's great. That's the first time I hear anyone that shares the relationship inside Derby that close. Yeah, that's great. That's, close. that's He's great. Amazing. We're really lucky to have him. Great. So, how long have you been skating with the Sitka Sounds Layer? I started in February of last year, um, right before our, our first boot camp. Um, the league kind of started in December of 2012, but there were maybe three to five girls skating at the time. Um, by the time I joined, there were 18 to 20. Um, and yeah, I got my skates three days before our first boot camp and went for it. Great. And how did you w join? Uh, what made you want to do that? Did you watch Whip It or was it from somewhere else? Um, I have seen Whip It, yes. <laughs> it's inspirational. <laughs> um, but we had watched, you know, Rat City Roller Girls and just, you know, Derby is coming alive in the United States and it's everywhere. And so I kept hearing more and more about it and I just, you know, I've always wanted to do it. I think all of us have. And so when the opportunity came up, we all went for it. Great. And what about you, Salt? How long have you been skating? Why did you decide to do this crazy, awesome sport? Well, I started, I think, like three days before Ange here. Um, just got my skates right then, February, our first boot camp. And um, so not long, had never skated before. Um, and I start, well, I was interested because I'm kind of a reality show geek. I mean, <laughs> guilty pleasure. And I saw Roller Girls, it was like in 2006, a uh, reality thing about um, in Austin, Texas, mm -hmm. where I think it all kind of re restarted mm -hmm. and kind of got obsessed with it. And so when this came about, I jumped on it. So, yeah. Great. Well, I have a few pictures here and I want you to talk to me about it. The first picture looks like the whole team is skating. Where is that and we why are. were you guys skating out there? <laughs> we are outside in downtown Sitka. Um, that's the 4th of July parade last year and it was really one of the first times that the community of Sitka saw the Slayers. and. You know, there we are in our derby gear and skating downtown. I think it was raining a little bit. It was raining. <laughs> Everybody was hooting and hollering. They loved it. Yeah, yeah. it was kind of our debut. Yes, it was mm -hmm. our debut in Sitka. And now um, people love it. I mean, people were looking at us like, what are these girls doing? I have no idea what's derby. And now we've got two bouts under our belt and we have a lot of supporters. Great, that's awesome. So what about the second picture? It looks like you guys are somewhere on a beach. Yes, we are at Allen Point Cabin. That's that's me and my family, um, my husband Stuart, my daughter Kayani, and my sons Rawl and Olin, and our first kid, Sassy Joe, our dog. <laughs> and um, in the background is uh, our fishing vessel, El Tiburon. My husband's a longliner and he shrimps, and this year we're going to start trolling, so yeah. Great. Yeah. So what about the last picture? You look very cool there with your drum. Thank you. Um, I'm dressed in my regalia and this was taken um, by my friend Angela McGraw. We are at um, the T Tourism Industry Association Conference in Miami and I was there to represent our Clinkett Dance Group in Sitka, the Nakahiti Dancers. Um, and so yeah, that's all handmade regalia and hand beaded and woven. Um, I'm also a member of the New Plain Dancers which are also out of Sitka and they'll be here in a few weeks um, at Celebration. I can't make it but Go and cheer them on. <laughs> great. That's great that you're involved in so many things, yeah. so many great things. So what about you, Salt? First picture is the whole team, right? Where was this? Um, that actually, I believe, is our very first boot camp. So we had just started skating. I think uh, Shaka Khan and Tundra Roki came from Anchorage and did our first boot camp. So we were just all fresh meat right right there. So, But we had a pretty pretty good turnout. I think there was a few girls that came from Petersburg too, so that's not all of us. I think there was only like 10 or 12 to 15 of us at that yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. So that was right in in February. Yeah. Great. So what about the second picture? It looks like you're playing with salt there. <laughs> I am. That's my husband and I just uh, harvesting our sea salt in our, in our um, we call it the salt mine, uh, the company that we have. Um, it's just 
harvesting salt. <laughs> Great. And the last picture looks like you're picking up something from a tree. I can't really tell what it is, so tell me about that one. Okay, I'm actually picking spruce tips, um, which a lot of people do in Sitka, but we act actually infuse the spruce tips into our salt. So we have a, a wild spruce tip salt. We do it with wild blueberries as well. So we've got a few local flavors of salt. So that's, I'm just out hunting and gathering. Right, well thank you guys very much for your time and I can't wait to see you skating. And we're gonna be back with the half time right now. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> All right, well there is Tundra Wookie. And she's saying hi to mom and dad back in Idaho. We're watching online right now. Great to know we have a national yeah. and maybe possibly international <laughs> audience. Who knows? Shout out to Belgium. I don't know if Belgium's watching. I can but only hope that there. Belgium's watching. Yeah. Brussels, love you. Bruges. Derby everywhere. Derby everywhere. <laughs> All right. Well, Derby is everywhere. It is. And Derby, and to prove it, it's even in Sitka, Alaska. Of all yes. places in the world, so Derby's cool. in Sitka. And, of course, is very strong right here in Juneau, Alaska. But Did what's interesting is that Sitka, it may be even, it's pretty darn strong in Sitka, Alaska, because Sitka's up by 11 points in oh, the first yeah. half over Juneau, Alaska. And that's actually really a surprise. Yeah, if you're they joining us now, for Sitka's first out of Sitka bout ever, and uh, they're working Juno by a little over 10 points here, so it's, it's pretty a, neat to see. It's a low-scoring affair so far. The This is the second uh, bout of a double header, so they've shortened the halves, 20-minute yeah. halves, so yeah. that we don't have people falling down. I, I don't know, end. but like those 20-minute halves, like they kind of just lend themselves to a lot more energy they just like, like blasting off from the line, and everybody's really excited because this is Sitka's first bout. It's pretty fun to watch. It is. It's fun to watch. It's been a lot of action, a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, a lot more of an offensive battle in a way. Even though it's a low-scoring affair, it's a lot more about the jammers breaking through. We watched a, a bout a couple hours ago that was Rage City going up against Juno. You know, a lot more seasoned couple of teams. Very strategic, very, very strategic. like just structure everywhere in the blocking and everything. And here, this being Sika's first bout and the extra roughs as well, you're seeing a lot more like it's, it's coming together as it goes. And like it, the jams are unpredictable which lends itself to a different kind of excitement, I think, and especially for all these players doing it for their first time. And we actually even saw the double Cincinnati, which was, uh, which was an exciting thing to see. <laughs> right, the double Cincinnati? Well, you call it eating the baby. I hate that. I hate calling it eating the baby. I don't want to. That's terrible. What is that? Well, you it's, know, it's derby. <laughs> it's derby. <laughs> it's a derby thing. You can get away with all kinds of awesome It's a derby things. thing. You wouldn't understand. Yeah. <laughs> we'll call it, we are calling it just double Cincinnati. I don't think we're going to see, just for tonight, just for tonight, but I don't think we're going to see that again. It's one of those plays where it's really cool when you see it happen. And it's something that the team has to talk about beforehand, and people have to be on board. But if you try to pull it twice, right, the other up team gets smart a little yeah. too fast. But it happened. Uh, it happened in about we saw it previously did. a it team. Did. Uh, was it the Fairbanks team came down and did that? Um, I, I think remember. it was June. Actually, it might have been April Mayhem who pulled oh, that one. Oh, who pulled that one. Okay, so it was she's Juno. She's the raven. So she's, <laughs> she's the, the one, tricky one. The trickster. The trickster <laughs> yeah. did it. Yes, okay, April Mayhem did and it. And we're missing her today, but like you said, we do have some, uh, at least one Sika player that seems to be channeling that yeah, kind of Becca energy. Yeah, Becca the Wrecker, man. I mean, Very she cool. is really an interesting Scoring a lot of points. player to watch. Scoring a lot of points. I'd say maybe a majority of the jammer points has been scored by her. She yeah. had a couple of great runs during power jam specifically mm -hmm. she comes in fast she's got a lot of body strength she's kind of thin in her build but when she comes in she she puts her legs out wide kind of like, so that blockers yeah. don't know which way she's going to go and then she brings them in and Makes veers off to one way or the other good tactic and then fights through yeah it's a really it's, it's a really interesting tactic and fun to watch and i know we've talked about this in previous bouts but also when another team comes to juno and they play on this floor it's kind of a whole new experience for them. So when you see them not sliding off onto their butts like every two, like it's, it's impressive to see them come and play on this hardwood floor. And, uh, well, and explain be, that a little bit. What are, where are they, what are they typically practicing uh, on? A lot of times in gyms where if you can get someone to let your team play in the gym, uh, many times, like even what the roller, the Juno Roller Girls practice on during season, it'll have like kind of a, a grippier. That grippy surface to it, yeah, which is great for basketball and things where you're wearing shoes not always that great when you have wheels on your feet. 
So this is so fun. it feels it actually it, it in that environment. What happens? Number one, it's a little slower. It's a little slower. But secondly, it holds a little bit better. It holds a little better, which sometimes can make for more injuries. But on this, you see like a lot of speed, and I wonder if that some of that has to do with this being like maybe a different surface than what sure. they're used to skating on in six. Yeah, well, Centennial Hall has been great about having this whole event here. So cool. It's been a wonderful home for uh, Juno Roller Girls yeah. and for all the visiting teams that have been coming in, so that's been exciting. Well, the teams are starting to take the track again now. Juno Roller Girls are on here. The uh, Here they are. They're, they're, <laughs> they're making their uh, presence known. The extra roughs are uh, on the ground here, and uh, they're, they're going for it. And uh, Sitka's going to be coming in here now. They need a little bit of crowd support here, I'd say, because they need a little bit of boost. Uh, Sitka came in with a lot of energy, as you were they saying. Did, and it's been Fresh a lot legs, of a lot of energy, -stars and a lot of pent extra roughs. and a lot of pent up energy. I'm sure they are. Ex they are. This is a this is a first for them. Ready to go. Right, ready to go. We're going to go <laughs> in. We're going to play another team. We're not playing a scrimmage. We're playing another team in their home court. So they're really bringing it, and uh, that's been really exciting to see. And as yeah. you said, exciting to see the skill level. How, oh, blowing kisses out there. Blowing kisses to Skatey I caught bright. you blowing kisses to Skatey <laughs> Bright out there. And, uh, yeah, great to see. Well, wonderful. I would like to say really quick, um, and I know I mentioned this earlier, but it would be the like, Juno Roller Girls is trying to, like, double the amount of women that are participating in this. And right now, Sika has more roster, like, rostered do-paying skaters than we do. And Sitka's awesome, and I think it's so cool that they've come together that way. But I know we have more women in this town, and I know that we can make it work. And uh, kind of, again, like the All-Stars would like to play the All-Star game, and the Extra Refs would like to be like a solid B team that plays together. So if there's anyone out there thinking about joining Roller Derby, get in contact with the Juno Roller Girls. Summer is the best time to start because practices are more laid back, so you can go at your own, your own pace and your own skill level. And, um, and we've got lots bit, of extra skates, lots of extra gear, if you're worried about the financials issues with that. but uh, There's been a little bit of restructuring in the Juno Roller Girls, yep. too, recently. There used to be two teams that were kind of rivals, went against each mm -hmm. other, and then it was restructured into more of an all-star so all and an alternate. and a B team. And the cool and thing that's, about what's the happening, extra why is that? Why is that happening that way? Um, it's happening that way so that, that in, so you don't have new players immediately playing these like high caliber games. You can kind of ease into it over time. Well, here we go. We're going with the first jam of the second half here. Got T-Tripper jumping out on lead jammer. And my understanding of that restructuring for Juno as well was also so they could participate in league play. Absolutely. A lot more. So they go up to Anchorage with that all-star team and they really compete. And as, they, as we already saw, actually beat Anchorage, which is real, a very established, large city, mm -hmm. big team. It's exciting to see Juno competing on that level. And they're well, here all, we go. And it's, they're all becoming part of the Woofteda Worldwide Roller yes. Derby uh, thing, so that it's pretty exciting for Juno. Well, T is coming around right now as the lead jammer for Juno. She's looking to score points. They have to make up some points here. Meanwhile, we've got um, that's a slow Vak yourself coming through. She almost lost her balance, but came through. She's the jammer on the other side, but looking to make up points. T and double deck her. Nice little battle on the side there. Sitka Slayers have two uh, players in the sin bin. And uh, one of them coming out of the sin bin right now is who we just saw at halftime with the great interview with uh, Shorty Morena. And uh, that is none other than Angela Death. And Angela. Angela Angel Death. Uh, Death, yes. And uh, a spooky, spooky nickname. Got some loots and hollers coming out for T here. Here you go. She's she coming been doing through. a great job jamming I so mean, far. She has been bout. skating for three hours <laughs> now and is going. still fighting. And Angel of Death is the last one coming through for her, but got through there. She scored five points on that pass. And here comes Becca the Wrecker coming in as a blocker. Yeah, we got some good contact here. Juno is now up by nine points because they've scored about 20 points in this jam. So. Exactly what needed to happen for Juno happened in the very first jam, which is they made up a whole bunch of points. 20 points in that jam alone Go went team. to Juno. 25 points now went to Juno with only three going to Sitka. So 73 to 62 now the score, Juno in the lead. It's a little bit of that kind of funny thing. It seems like when Sitka gets a little too far out ahead. Juno says, "Okay, now we have to. Here we go," and they do it. They yeah, have the, that the experience mental games level that are happening, and they have that mental toughness that mm -hmm. comes with a lot of experience. It seems to 
be able to get them to score points in big chunks when they need it. All right, coming up now, here comes. Hellion jamming for the All two right, the girls. and Hellion Hansen came around on the outside and has been to, is uh, now lead jammer. And on the Sitka side, the lead jammer has been pushed out. That is Jewel, Jewel B. Hurton. Jewel B. Hurton headed to the box here, which means it's a power jam for Hellion. Oh! Here goes Valkyrie that. went flying out there. Hellion sent Valkyrie flying. And you might have seen and Hellion. And Hellion over came the on the inside. A little bit, but come back inside again That's with the new rule set. About. That's legal. That so new rule set, going. that used to be uh, an automatic penalty. Now they leave it up to the judgment of the referees, whether it was intentional or not. That was ruled unintentional. She stayed in. I think it's great because it'll keep the game going, but also maybe limit like limit the number of injuries that might have been caused. Because people because are trying to tie rope so, so hard. Much. To, yeah. Hawk block headed to the Aurora Project Sinbin. We Bruce got Pinner is back Bruce in. Pinner is also in for Sitka. I want to mention that as one of the blockers in there. Here comes a replay of some of the action we just saw in that last jam with Sitka go, uh, Juno going to the lead by 19 points. Hellion Hansen fighting to the outside. There is what we were talking about. Her skate just went out. And she but just came back in. Still and totally okay. Legal. As a legal play. Wouldn't have been last year. <laughs> and was uh, able to take all of those hits. <laughs> oh, man. All right. 19 points separates these two teams now. 83 to 62 the score. Sitka now trailing Juno, and here comes Kimbustable. Bust uh oh, bringing out the big guns. Here comes Kimbustable. And they are so side by side. We'll Look see how fast they are skating. That's Kimbustable against Becca the Wrecker. But not and I'll before Kimbustable tried a little bit of defense of her own. And I'll tell you something. Becca the Wrecker got a little bit of the better of that, I think. Don't you think? I mean, that was some good skating. I'm really impressed with uh, with Sitka so far. They're Becca the Wrecker doing, doing some great damage on a couple of these jams. Neither team scored any points on that one. It's still 62 to 83 with Juno in the lead by 21 points. Oh, they're gonna try this double Cincinnati thing again. Is that what's gonna happen? There it goes. Oh, she thought about it. T thought about it. Coming back around. And it's a dingo ate your baby. <laughs> Is that what happened? I don't think so. But Hellion Hansen is declared lead jammer. Lead jammer. <laughs> T, T, T. T, sorry, T. Yeah. T. <laughs> T gets knocked to the outside there by, uh, by Sitka. Uh, Bruce. Also, Obscene is in there creating that uh, blocker wall. Got a couple other Sitka players that we haven't seen as much here. And Valkyrie is always in the middle of the action. She's been sent out into the sin bin. Bruce Pinner, that's her yeah, name. Yeah, Bruce, Bruce Pinner, Pinner Catastrophe, like and Obscene in there. Meanwhile, in the Sitka sin bin, we've got, they've got two players in the Sitka sin bin right now. Jammer looks like she's coming back in, entering behind the pack. Pack is way back there. That she's got to come in all yeah. the way behind. Here she comes, that's Double Decker coming in. And Double Decker comes in for Sitka as their jammer and immediately does damage. T didn't know she was there, looked her over her shoulder and immediately called it. T did not realize Double Decker gives her a little pat on the shoulder <laughs> saying, hey, hey, snuck up on you. All right. <laughs> like to see that. Well, Juno scored nine points there. They're up by 30 points even right now with 92 to 62 to score. Juno uh, kind of showing a little bit of their experience here in the second half yep. and saying, okay, that was all good fun in the first half. Now we'll we'll lay down a few points. But uh, Sitka still battling really well, scoring points. And as we saw in that last one, they have a little bit of moxie and a little bit of sneakiness on their own. <laughs> got in good. there, got, to, got behind T on that one. All right, Hell more action Hansen here for the in Centennial Roller Hall. Girls. And who do we have for Sitka? I like how Becca the Wrecker, I mean, she is just playing all positions. She's forming a wall there with Valkyrie. Job. And Kipper, Kipper smacks us through. That's an interesting wall there. You got Becca, Becca the Wrecker and Valkyrie, two long and lean players forming a really interesting wall there. Not as much uh, 
not not as much as size and uh, uh, power there, but a lot of ability to spread across the track, and that was really an interesting and effective. And Val wall Corey there. doing great defense there for Kippard Snacks, opening a door for her to get through, and she's lead jammer, and she's racking up some points. Here comes Kippard Snacks around as lead jammer. Meanwhile, Bruce Pinner has been sent outside. Oh, and she tried to stay on her feet, but again with that floor. Kippard smacks. <laughs> that is tough. Try to stay on her feet, but was Hellion scoring a few points. Kippard smacks. Lean the rally here. Here comes Becca, the record leading blocking for Kippard Snacks as Kippard comes in in a little bit of a pile up there and calls the and match. Calls the match. The jam. But not yes. before. The, yeah, well, but not before Hellion made a few points there. That was good. Looks Just like to be. It looks to be a fairly even jam there with Sika scoring 11 and Juno scoring 10. And here she comes around. I think this is where she just, her skates just can't quite keep up with her body. And there she goes down. And Skatey sits there and says, yeah, bring it. Let's go, bring it. Bring it on. Skatey Bright not giving her a break. All right. Coming up next with live action back with the jam. With uh, just over 11 minutes left in this second half of action here in this bout between the Sitka Slayers. Catastrophe lead jammer and T is coming up behind here. And who is that that took her down there? Yeah, that's number number Some twenty number seven twenty seven there. That's obscene. Nice. And obscene coming around. Here comes catastrophe as the jammer. Good move on the outside there by catastrophe to avoid that block. Still coming around. Here comes Becker and the catastrophe record. Catastrophe calls it. Catastrophe calls the jam for any more points. Well, this certainly is a much more high-flying affair than the first bout that we saw tonight, which was, as we were saying earlier, much more strategic, much more about power, much more about blocking. This one's a lot about speed. It seems like it's a lot about speed and really trying to approach the blockers and buzz through Make quickly. Make it happen, yeah. And then when it doesn't, the jammers seem to be calling the jams fairly quickly. You know, it kind of reminds me of pool. You ever see the professional pool oh, game? Absolutely. Yeah. So I used to be a professional strategic. pool player. Really? No. No. <laughs> and then, of course, when you're first playing pool, it's just about like yes. making the point. Hitting it. Just hitting it at all. Right. <laughs> yeah. Combustible is through as uh, lead jammer we've here. seen many times tonight already in both bouts as lead jammer. And now coming through with a lot of speed on the outside. She's well, got so yourself. much skill and then cuts back on Jewel Be Sorry. Sorry, Jewel be hurting. So I keep saying Jewel be sorry. Then <laughs> <laughs> here comes Kim Bustable coming back around. It's a power jam for her. And she's through immediately. I mean, she's smiling to the crowd and loving it. It's got to feel good. To this make is those a victory passes. lap of, of sorts for her after being so instrumental in that victory earlier tonight over Orange uh, She crush. did get MVP jammer for the last bout. I think I think that's right. It absolutely sounds right to me. Ooh, some good defense oh, there Oh, man, Angela very death. good. And Jewel be hurting and Angel of Death coming after it. And Crash Menagerie. Wow, they really got the better of that was great combustible defense. on that one, which is hard to do, and she calls it. Wow, she concedes it there. Really well done. Here comes a little bit of that action with Kim Bustable saying, I think I might have had enough of that one. She's coming back around with so much speed here. Such a great maneuver. But look at that. I love the love that. Not giving an inch, but there you go. Just faked her out on the inside. Always be looking on the outside. <laughs> Who's coming to get you? And man, did Combustible just look back and say, yep, that's what it's all about. <laughs> all right, next jam coming up here with Hellion Hansen going up against Sitka's Double Decker. Double Decker is lead jammer as they come through. Bit of a race here. Hot we'll Wheels has had, got a trouble it. with her skate a little bit here. She's got an issue with her skate maybe, or maybe with Get, the, Double maybe. Decker gets all her points and calls it right before Hellion gets to the pack. We'll see if Hellion was able to pick up anything on the whistle. The lead jammer. Looks like we've got a toe stop on Hot Wheels out there. 
Four points for Juno and four points for Sitka. And uh, Sitka, you can see the Sitka player left a toe stop out on the uh, track there. Oh, that's what that's they're picking good. up, and that's why she was a little gingerly stepping on her skate because she knew she had lost that toe stop. So she's collecting that over on the Sitka bench right now. And sometimes you might see a player literally just pull themselves off the track uh, yeah, if and, they do have one of those equipment, equipment failure kind of things. And that's yeah. illegal. <laughs> that's a legal maneuver. Yeah, Everybody yeah. supports that. Right. All right, here it comes now, coming back through with Sitka. Ooh, this nice is Becker the Wrecker, Riley I Wyoming. believe. Oh, and Becker the Wrecker goes down a little hard there as T Good fights through as the Sarah lead jammer. Now, uh, Becker the Wrecker, I tell you, been impressed with her efforts tonight and with her abilities in skating. But T is getting the better of this one. T coming through. She's so powerful and such a great skater. And she's lead jammer. She's a dangerous combination of power and great skating ability. And she loves it. <laughs> Coming around, loving the crowd. And the crowd loves her. And there she just laid out hits. She left people on the ground. It's nothing but carnage and awfulness. Oh my gosh, it's horrible to see and wonderful at the same yeah, time. Yeah, you know a team trusts their jammer if they can step back and yeah. let the jammer push the pack forward. And that's exactly what happened. They T know is that trustworthy. T's gonna, T's <laughs> that's gonna what come the T in. stands for. That's not really what the yes, T stands for. Yes, well, it's not really what the T stands for. <laughs> but T comes in, and the thing, the thing about that, right, is that not and only she is she gonna it. come in with power, you know that's gonna happen, yep. but when she's jamming, she brings a lot of speed. She, she does. skates faster than a maybe typical jammer. There and she goes, playing the that. crowd, and she tends to make pretty intelligent choices, too. All right, they're setting up for the next jam here. Hellion Hansen's going to be the jammer for Juno. Well, a little bit of a huddle here while they're thinking about uh, what they're going to do. Got a bit of a timeout here on the floor. Juno scored 15 in that last jam, and they've taken a commanding lead of this match here. 138 to 86 is now the score. Sitka got out, their the brash upstarts came out with a lead in the first half. And I'd have to say experience is what came in in the second half and really allowed Juno to, to, uh, to take control of this uh, match so far. Just about six minutes left in the entire match here. And uh, Juno again with the pretty commanding lead of 138 over uh, 86. Although Sitka will always have that first half. Yes, they've got the first half. <laughs> they've got that one forever. And, then, and, and, and why not? Out. And why not have that be what happens? I mean, it was beautiful. You, you don't come up and, ex and ex necessarily expect to beat an experienced team that's been skating together for years. But you sure do love if you can hold it together for one half and hold it together and show them you've got something to, to I tell think them. We all kind of like to see that too, knowing Absolutely. how much experience Juno has. When you when you have a team come in with like less experience or a bit of the underdog, it's cool to see them take the lead like that in the first part. Very cool. All right. Coming around next for the next jam. We're at live action here as we took a little break there. And uh, you got three Sitka Slayers on the bench. So in we've the got Sinbin. Crash, and who is that with her? That's that's uh, they're ready to take on the whole Crash. Juno I think that's team. Valkyrie. And Valkyrie and Crash here going holding up, Hellion holding as long up. as they can. And there Hellion gets through as Valkyrie tried to get them, but here comes Crash and Valkyrie trying to hold them up. Again, when it's that's a power Crash jam Menagerie. like this, and you only have a couple players on the track, it's really about holding the other team's jammer as long as you can. But now we've got Becker the Wrecker back out there. And she's got some ability and some skating, and she's quick. And there she goes, busting through. So here we go. The race is on. You've also now got Nitrogen Peroxide. Joining the pack. Joining the pack. So Becker the Wrecker comes up behind. Back, both teams back to full strength. And Hellion Hansen calls off the jam. Again, if you're watching this live, hashtag AK Derby, go to the Twitter, check it out. Your answers, if you have any questions, you're, it'll be answered by a roller derby professional and our website manager. And uh, that's Sarah Yu and Money Honey up there answering the up questions. Up in the balcony. Up in the balcony in the best seats in the house. And uh, it's all Yay. happening here on 360 North. You can go to 360north.org. And tonight, if you're watching live, 360 North here in Alaska, 
and also online, 360north.org. There'll be a live a replay camera. of the first bout. If you missed the first bout, that'll happen at 11 o'clock tonight. Worth a watch, definitely worth a watch. All right. Catastrophe coming through as the lead jammer on this next one. Titan Young With, jamming, jamming for Juno. It's fun to see Titan Young out there jamming. She's a great blocker for Juno, but stretching her legs out a little bit as she's uh, getting a chance to do some jamming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and a good block put on Titan Young there by Double Decker. Both jammers and then obscene. are scoring passes now, so. We'll see when Catastrophe chooses to call it off, or if she does. Catastrophe is trying there. to come through. She went through a little bit of a whip. That's that whip it. And hip, then she calls it. <laughs> trying to call it. Trying to call it. She, they're saying she's not legally oh, jammer. She, she was thrown out. Right before the jam. If you if you get if you if you get a penalty called, even if you're lead jammer, you can't call after that. So Catastrophe not lead jammer. There's no lead jammer on. So the the jam can't be called at this point. Still a power jam it's for Titan Young. It's a power Young. jam for Titan Young. So here we go. A Watch little the chance. Juno Roller Girls help her out. Kind of swarm in and push the Sitka Sound Slayers out of the way so Titan could get through. Three minutes left in this bout here with Titan Young in a power jam situation, but not lead jammer. So she's not allowed to call it. It's going to go to its full length unless uh, at the last second here. Sika Slayer Jammer comes back Catastrophe in. comes back in. And now we see that uh, Valkyrie has been sent to the, and Valkyrie and Bruce Pinner from Sika have both been sent to the sin bin. That jam has been called. Just over two minutes, two and a half minutes left in the entire bout here. Woo. Juno really kind of taking control of this now, 157 to 92 the score. Here comes a replay of some of that action we just saw with yeah, this is uh, catastrophe. She tried and trying to call the jam here, right there, trying to call it. But I think what happened is that she was called by kind of blocking ahead of time. She was on the ground, and a Juno player was tripping over her, so she was not allowed to call the jam at that moment. Yeah, we got a little dancing was, happening here, a little roller dancing happening. That can happen. Meanwhile, we have an official review. A dance has to broken out. This thing. In the middle of a fight, a dance has broken out. We'll see what the officials say. <laughs> I know we're not. I can't believe we're not getting the action on the on on the track of this. There it was, but oh, it's over now. No, there it goes. Not completely over. All right, a little more crash. Hello, yes. What what what's going on? Yeah, they like the music. <laughs> That's DJ Manu, by the way, spinning the tracks. Does such a great job here in Juno. DJ Manu. Excellent, the always he is. All right, so two Sika players in the sin bin there. You see him. That is uh, that is uh, Bruce Pinner and uh, Valkyrie. And meanwhile, their jammer is still in, though. And we'll see what jammer they put in. But I'll tell you what, T just gets immediately to be lead jammer. And there you go. And meanwhile, it's for Sitka. Slovak yourself. Is that Slovak yourself? Go T, a little bit of She's a race over. Going I don't know on. if T is a kind of begging it out of the crowd. I don't know if she knows that oh, Slovakia's on now. her tail. She knows. she knows now, but she's gonna lay a hit yeah. on her. She's like, you know, I'm a blocker too. And that's a little feeling of the T pain. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nice save there. Coming she around, that's T, loving it. Feeding off the crowd. I <laughs> love that woman. <laughs> she comes, she's laughing, she's loving it. She's having a great time, and that's what this is about, first and foremost. She's got Fatty Duke lead blocking for her, and she's through, trying to get through. So Crash goes into her, T goes and gets a little bit of her, gets a little bit back. T's not, oh, and that hit was put on by Elliot Hansen on Crash Menagerie, the co-captain of Sitka. Great blocking there by the extra run. And Elliot Hel and, and Crash give each other a low five. <laughs> Let's see some wooden footed skating coming around right here of T right on the where edge. She saves herself. She gets a hit, but she stays in. She stays in. <laughs> well done by T Payne. <laughs> All right. We're going back and to live action. You know, now. And I wonder if 
like she hadn't been playing on their old rules, you know? Like she really made sure she didn't go over that That's line. Right. That's an old school yeah. tactic now since the new rule set is out. Absolutely. Good blocking. Here we from go. Hoff Scary Unitely the is out there, but Scary Unitely immediately gets put in the sin bin. So she had a chance to be the jammer there and will again in a couple of seconds here. But for now, it's Jewel be hurting. hurting. <laughs> and she's skating. Fast. Look, she's a fast skater. It's fun to see the different styles of skating that happens. Yeah. She's cutting through, cutting through. Oh, and Jewel B. Hurton comes down. The defensive ball that is Juno prevails here, it seems. Great Jewel blocking there by to come Fatty and there. Hawk. And Wyote. Oh, but Jewel B. Hurton stays in on the inside, and well done with five points scored. Still her power jam, but as they break through the 100 Scarra point is mark. In right now. This is it. This is it. There's zero seconds left in the bout here, so they'll finish out this jam with 47 seconds left in the jam. It's so hard to not cheer. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can cheer. Go you ahead. Cheer. I don't want to break this thing. You can cheer. You can cheer. <laughs> go, Scarra. Yeah, go, Jewel be hurting, There's skating it. Scarra be night. Scarra be night. up as many points as she can. Why yeah. call it off when we're here? Nice blocking by Hawk Block and Helly. Oh, hit. and a hard hit. Another hit from Wyote. Jewel be hurting. I'll tell you what, she's, she's got some skating now. moxie. Yeah. She's back on the track. Jewel be hurting while Scary Unitely is trying to fight through the blockers on the other side. She's through. Great blocking And there by comes Scary Unitely out in front. She's not the lead blocker, but she's in the lead right now. And that's Woo. the bout. With a cool. great last jam there. Yeah, I've got to be honest. They're both in the triple digits. I did not expect that yeah. from, from Sitka's first bout. Sitka came through with a, over 100 points, 109 points there. Got one more little replay here. Let's check out some of the action as we look at what was going on. Ooh. And here comes that hard hit. Down hard, but up quick. That's Jewel B. Hurton. Awesome. Oh, I feel All like right. the crowd really likes this Here come this the thank one. yous, the congratulations, the high fives all around. Everyone loving it. They did great, such a cool job. And uh, here they come for a lot of fun. This is a lot of what's going on with the fun of what happens with Derby. This was a good game. There's a lot of love in this game. This was a lot of fun. And these are my favorite. I'm so excited now that we have all these other teams in Southeast Alaska next season. We could play any, like it could be anybody's game. Petersburg, Wrangell, Ketchikan. You wouldn't, those? yeah, you wouldn't, uh, you know, you wouldn't bet against Sitka against a lot of teams right now, I'll tell you that. They showed a lot of skill, obviously a lot of heart uh, and a lot of speed and a lot of strategy. And that was really interesting to see that they really had brought so much together in their game in such a short period of time. Here comes Sitka, so cool. their first bout. Yeah, Sitka! They're loving it. <laughs> Internationally televised. They couldn't be more excited. 360 North bringing it to you <laughs> as the Sitka Slayers come around for Look the traditional oh, high fives. <laughs> So exciting to see, really cool stuff. All right, that's the action here from Centennial Hall. I'll tell you what, Rex. I'm pretty happy. I'm really happy that we just got to see that Fun game. to see a double header tonight. We got to see Orange Crush and Rage City earlier with the, with the Juno All-Stars. Juno All-Stars took care of business in their home court. Then came to sit the Slayers and the Juno uh, 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 ground. The extra rough. Extra rough, sorry. <laughs> extra roughs. The kind of B team that's uh, yeah. kind of developing for Juno right now, the extra roughs. And really so exciting to see Sitka really hold their own. Oh, man, was Come that out cool. and be competitive. Actually take a lead into the first half. I mean, I'll be honest, like, I didn't know what to expect, but being like, oh, it's their first bout, like maybe they'll get 40 or 50 points. And they, the score is 173 to 113. They didn't win, but oh, they scored they a lot of so points. Close. They got a lot of respect out of this group. They got a lot of respect out of the Junarola girls, even more so than they already and had. And I just am thrilled that Southeast can 
we can play amongst ourselves now. Absolutely. We can play these other cities and these other towns. And maybe it's maybe it's just going to continue to grow. There's a lot of other cities in Southeast Alaska. Such an exciting night. Roller Derby. Roller derby. <laughs> it's hypnotizing Get it you. Get started. <laughs> well, it's so an exciting cool. night. Been such a great night. Thanks so much for you being here. Yeah, that was a blast. Hopefully next season I'll be uh, a little bit Rex. more on the track. Yeah. You know, well, you know, we want you in the booth too here. I what know, are we going to do without you in the booth? But it's so hard to watch this and not play. <laughs> All right. Well, it's great to have you here. <laughs> it's I'm great in to decline be here. for the entire 360 North team that's been bringing this to you. We appreciate you tuning in tonight. We're going to have more roller derby coming up. It's going to keep coming all season long. Roller derby coming at you. It was great to bring you this doubleheader tonight. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks to 360 North. Tune in to 360North.org. Congratulations, Sitka. And congratulations to Sitka. <laughs> and we'll talk to you later. Thanks, 360 North. And thanks, Roller Derby. Have a good night. And we'll night. see you next time.